um, uh, you even put out a tweet in April uh, 2024, I think ahead of the elections, uh, when you tagged Elon Musk. Any conversations going on there? Well, you, if things go well, you should hear about it uh, as and when they decide to come to India. As and when they decide, uh, you're not giving much away and I'm somebody uh, who always wants to know what's really going on and the show is called Frankly Speaking. So the onus is on you to be <laughs> frank on where you are in these conversations. See, if you look at it, uh, our, as state government and as Telugu Desam Party government, uh, we've been having conversations with Tesla way back uh, since 2015. Mr. Naidu met Elon Musk way back then. And the conversations continued, even out of power. End of the day, we have love for our own state. In power, out of power, we'll continue to support our state, promote our state. So those conversations continue to happen. But it is for them to decide when they want to come to India, how they want to come to India, and in which form they want to come to India. So I don't think I should so let's preempt be, Let me be specific. Uh, since you have uh, assumed power, uh, and in the last 100 days, have there been conversations and... Uh, are we are we looking at some positive development, some movement forward? You will see it across sectors. There have been amazing I'm conversations across sectors. I'm speaking it? of uh, Elon Musk and that conversation first, among other conversations, which I want you to uh, describe. No, continue to have conversations. See, end of the day, it's very unfair. It'll be unfair on my part to jump the gun on this. But definitely, Andhra Pradesh is among the top three investment destinations now in India. And we, it's not just about ease of doing business, it's going to be about speed of doing business. And this is the promise I've been giving to everyone and we're going to deliver on that promise. Okay, so Nara Lokesh, let me, let me also ask you, there have been challenges in the first 100 days and the Vijayawada uh, floods uh, uh, were, were a case in point. The manner in which we saw you and Mr. Naidu, you know, on ground zero, it was almost as if he was a man possessed. I mean, that's the sense of urgency one got to see uh, as far as the visuals are concerned. Uh, what really happened? And, and, and the call that you gave for startups to come forward, uh, to give technical solutions and use technology to uh, help solve a few problems, uh, give us a sense of what really was going on behind the scenes. I mean, if you look at the floods, it was one in 248 year event. So it's once in two centuries that we had that kind of water come in. And the areas were completely inundated with six, seven, foot, seven feet of water. So, and there was water flowing through that area. So even boats to go in, rescue, give basic relief, we found it extremely challenging. So when we, when we realized this, it was very important for us to use the best of technology available out there to deliver relief. And that's what we've done. And then subsequently we used a sandbox mechanism to work on how do we give focus on rehabilitation. So 15 days after the flood, uh, you know, we were able to uh, deliver on the relief. 15 days later, we did the entire rehabilitation bit. Almost 650 crores of money was actually sent to the bank accounts without any fanfare on a humanitarian ground. And all this we were able to do because we did the sandbox, we had the technology in place. You know, we, we used drones. I mean, it's a pilot. I wouldn't say that we solved the problem. It's a pilot. We had 40 drones that were working 24 hours actually delivering food to the rooftops of various houses. And, I and it worked? It worked. 50,000 houses got food delivered. It did work. I wish I had 2,000 drones. So that's one thing we have taken up as a task that we will get 2,000 drones for the agriculture sector that you know, farmers can use, farmers' children can Uberize those drones and use them for the farming sector. And then when there is any emergency, we can pull it out and deliver food using drones. Come again, come again, you, you use the word Uberize those drones. Yes. So are we going to have drone cabs, <laughs> literally speaking, uh, which will be used uh, for various sectors? No, the idea was that uh, there's no point of every farmer buying a drone. So we can have a group of farmers buy a drone, be the farmer's son, train him, get him you know, through various subsidies, give him a drone. And then the farmers can have an app on when they want any spraying to be done or any crop assessment to be done. They can just push a button and then you know, they can get the entrepreneur to come and fly a drone on them. And the pricing can be very transparent. And this is something we're actually working with the agriculture ministry now.